Hi everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable crochet cauldron. I made mine in black, but for the video I'll be using this teal color so that it's easier to see. I added some sequins to my stuffing for a little bit of sparkle, but the pattern also includes a crocheted cover for the stuffing if you don't want the stuffing to show. So you can really style it any way you like. Let's get started. You'll need about 50 to 60 yards of worsted weight yarn for the cauldron itself, 10 to 15 for the cover, a pipe cleaner, whatever stuffing materials or decorations you'd like to use, and of course a crochet hook. I recommend a size H 5mm hook, but use whatever hook you need to match the pattern gauge. We're going to start by chaining two, or you can work a magic loop, whichever way you prefer. Now we're going to do six single crochet into the magic loop or into the second chain from your hook. and we're not going to join. Instead, we're going to mark the first stitch of each round. My favorite way to mark the beginning of the round in continuous rounds is with a running stitch marker. That's just a different piece of thread in a contrasting color, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it between the last stitch that we just finished and the first stitch of the next round. So before I start round two, I'm just going to lay this running stitch marker over my work in between those stitches. Now when I reach that marker, I know that I've reached the end of the round. For round two, we wanna go from six stitches to 12, so we want to increase in every stitch. You can just do two single crochet in each stitch, or you can use this um, more invisible kind of an increase. So first we're going to do a single crochet in just the back loop. So there's the front loop, there's the back loop. I'm going just in the back loop, and I'm doing a single crochet. Next, I'm going to go under both loops just like I normally would for a stitch and do another single crochet. So I've put two single crochet stitches in the same stitch. They're just not in exactly the same place. So let's do that again. Back loop and both loops. Back loop and both loops, and I'll do that all the way around. That's 12 stitches, I've reached the marker, and I'm done with my round. So now, to, before I start the next round, I'm going to take my marker and just flip it over. And that way it'll keep running, kind of like a running stitch, all the way up the beginning of the round. For round three, we want to go from 12 stitches to 18, so we're going to increase in every alternate stitch. So increase, remember that's back loop and then both loops, and then just a regular single crochet in the next stitch. Increase. and then don't increase. And I'll do that all the way around. Okay, that's 18 stitches. I'm back to the beginning of the round, so I'll just move my marker over. Now round four is where we're going to use baubles to make feet for our cauldron. So I'm going to start with an increase. And remember the increase is we go first in the back loop and then in both loops. Oop, there we go, so that's an increase. Then I'm gonna do a single crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm gonna do a bobble in the next stitch, and I'm using really large bobbles here with seven double crochet in them. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, yarn over and pull through just two loops. So far that's like doing a double crochet, right? But we're going to stop here. That's one, we're going to do that six more times, so we'll have a total of seven double crochets plus this one extra loop that was on our hook to begin with for a total of eight loops on our hook by the time we're done, okay? 
So that was one, here's two. Three, four, five, six, and seven times. Look at that big fat bobble. Now I have eight loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all eight all at once like that. And I'm going to make sure that pushes out to the right side of the fabric so it's facing me. And I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch. Now it's really easy here to skip the stitch. That is the next stitch you want to single crochet in, not here. Your count will get thrown off, so be careful of that. You want to do a single crochet right here. Whoop. Right there. Okay. Now we're going to increase in the next stitch. So back loop. Back loop. And then both loops. Okay, single crochet in the next stitch, and we start our repeat again. So increase, and single crochet, and then bobble. Yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, do that seven times. Now I have eight loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all eight, Make sure that pushes to the front and single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, and see how close that next stitch is to the bobble. Don't miss that stitch. Okay, increase. And single crochet. And start our repeat again. Increase. single crochet, and bobble. Yarn over, pull through all eight, push it out forward. Don't miss that little stitch right there. Go single crochet in there. Okay. Increase in the next stitch. And single crochet in the very last stitch of the round. And those are the three feet that are going to hold up our cauldron. So we flip our yarn over and we're ready to start our running stitch marker, flip it over and we're ready to start the next round. So with the increases we did in this round, that took us to 24 stitches. Now we wanna go up to 30 stitches. So we're going to increase every four stitches. So we increase and then do three single crochet. So increase. Split the yarn there. There we go. Increase. And then three single crochets. So one, two. And when you get to the bobble, you're going to work right in the top of the bobble here. Okay? Three. And then we do another increase. And one, two, three. And we're going to keep doing that all the way around and we should end up with 30 stitches. Okay, I made it all the way around and I have 30 stitches and I'm just going to flip this marker over again. And for the next round, we're going to go up to 36. We want to kind of avoid making these points though, so we're going to shift where we put our increases. So instead of increasing in the first stitch, we're going to move over by two stitches. So two single crochet. One, two. Okay, now we're going to start kind of a repeating pattern of increase and single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So increase, and then one, two, three, and four. Increase, one, two, three, Four. I'm going to keep doing that around and I'll get to you at the end of that last repeat there. Okay, so I've repeated all the way around, but I don't have enough stitches to do another repeat. I'm going to do that last increase. And then remember, we already worked two single crochet in between these increases. So I've only got two left to do. So increase and then two single crochets, the last two stitches. Okay, pull that marker over. 
We have 36 stitches and we are now ready for the even portion of the cauldron where we're just working the sides straight up at 36 stitches. So that's just single crochet in every stitch all the way around and when you get to the end of the round flip the marker over. I've worked round 7, 8, and 9 with just 36 single crochet all the way around, no changes. Now for the next two rounds I want to drop down to 30 stitches. So I'm going to do that in this round in round 10 by doing a decrease and then 4 single crochet. So you can use the normal single crochet two together decrease where you pull up a loop in this stitch, pull up a loop in this stitch, yarn over and pull through both stitches, or I'm going to show you a more invisible decrease. And this is the decrease I like to use. Stick your hook under just the front loop of the first stitch. Now you gotta kinda twist it a little bit to get it under there, but stick it under just the front loop of the second stitch as well. So now it's under the front loop of both of those stitches. Yarn over and pull up a loop in both of those stitches, and then yarn over and pull through two to finish your single crochet. So you've made a decrease, but it's somewhat less visible and a little bit tighter. Okay, so that is the first decrease. Now we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. And then we're going to do another decrease. Front loop, front loop, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay. Three, four, and then we do another decrease. And we're going to keep doing this all the way around. Reach the end of the round. I now have 30 stitches on this round and I pull my stitch marker over. For round 11, I'm just going to work in each stitch all the way around with a single crochet. That's the end of round 11. Switch my stitch marker over and we're ready to start round 12. Now round 12 is where I put in the handles. I have a note in the pattern that if you prefer, you can just do this as an even round, just single crochet in every stitch around and make your handles separately and you can sew those on later. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that later in the video. But I like doing it this way because then there's no little pieces to sew on, you know? So I'm going to show you how to do the handles in this in the round as part of the round. Okay, so first we're going to single crochet in the first four stitches. And that gets me to where I want my handle. So now the handle, we're going to chain four. And then we're going to turn to work back into that chain and we're going to look for those back bumps, okay? And we're going to go slip stitch in the second chain, two single crochets in the next chain, and slip stitch in the next chain. So that right there is basically our handle, all right? And we're going to attach that to this stitch here and then to this stitch when we get down to there. So first we're going to attach it to this stitch by making a slip stitch. Okay, Whoop. lost my yarn there. There we go, so I've made a slip stitch. Now we need to turn around and continue working the round. Now I'm going to turn around and I'm keeping the handle on the outside of my work. Do you see that? I don't want the handle to be inside. I don't want the yarn wrapped around it. I want the handle on the outside like this. And then we're going to just single crochet in the next two stitches. Now look, this one we've already worked into, so don't go into that one. You want to go into this stitch and that stitch. So single crochet in each of the next two stitches. All right, now this is where we want to attach the handle back to the end of our stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and take this loop out of, off of my hook. And I'm going to pull that handle up and lay it flat. So now you see the handles laying flat and that's what it should look like when it's attached. Now we're going to stick our hook in from underneath. So go right in the end here where we made that slip stitch. That's probably too far in. Find like two loops-ish right there, okay? But you're going from bottom to top through the handle. And then you pick up this loop that we took our hook out of and you're going to just pull that straight through the handle. 
So now the handle is attached. We'll do a couple more stitches and you'll see what it looks like when it's all laying flat. There's our handle and you can see it kind of sticks up and you've got this nice rounded handle at the, the top of our stitches. Okay, so let's continue. I've done three single crochet here. I need to do a total of 13. So that's three, four, that was 13. Now we're doing another handle. So again, chain four, turn your work, slip stitch in the second chain from your hook, two single crochet in the next chain, and I'm working in back bumps here. Okay, slip stitch in the next chain. That's my handle. Slip stitch to connect it to the stitch we just worked, the single crochet we just worked, and turn my work back around again. There's my handle attached to one side. Now I turn it around, and we do another two stitches. So one, two single crochet here, pull this loop out, take it off my hook, grab my handle, and going from bottom to top, actually I wanna get a little lower than that, there we go. Going from bottom to top, I'm going to take this loop and pull it straight through. And now my handle's attached. So now we single crochet in the remaining stitches and there should be nine of them. For round 13, we're going to work even again, so we're just going to do single crochets in each stitch around, and that'll give us 30. When you get to the handle, remember not to crochet into any of the handle stitches. This was a regular stitch, because that was my first four that I started with, right? And then remember there's two inside the handle, so we're gonna cro single crochet into each of those two but we're not crocheting into these stitches that were the actual handle, okay? And then we come back on the other side of the handle and we single crochet into those. And your handle may pop out and over when you're doing this, just push it back the way it's supposed to go. The next round, we're going to go down from 30 stitches to 24 stitches. So we're going to decrease and then single crochet in three stitches. So here's my starting decrease. Remember, under the front loop of two stitches, right? Pull up a loop, single crochet, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. And we're going to do another decrease right behind the handle. There we go. And single crochet in the next three stitches. And I keep doing that all the way around and I'll end up with 24 stitches. Okay, that's the end of that round, and we've got one more round to do. I'm gonna flip my marker over and we're gonna start round 15. For round 15, we've just come down to 24 stitches. I'm going to increase back out again to 30 to kind of give us that top brim of the cauldron. So I'm going to, instead of decrease and then single crochet in three stitches like last round, I'm gonna increase and then single crochet in three stitches. So I increase in this stitch, remember that single crochet in the back loop, and then single crochet in both loops. So that's my increase, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. So I'm basically putting increases everywhere I had decreases last round. So back loop, both loops, and then single crochet in the next three. And I'll do that all the way around. I've come all the way around, and since this is the top of the cauldron, I wanna finish this edge here. See how I've got a little jog from the beginning to the end of the round? So I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And if you want to, you can even slip stitch in one more stitch after that. But you just kinda of wanna smooth out that edge. So now I just cut and weave in the ends, and this part of the cauldron is done. Instead of doing slip stitches, you can do a more seamless join as well. So I did, took out my slip stitches, and instead of doing the slip stitches, I'm just going to fasten off here after my last stitch. I'm going to pull the yarn through this stitch from back to front. So I insert my hook as if I was working into the stitch, grab the yarn from behind here, and pull it through. I'm basically mimicking a stitch here, okay? I'm going around the two 
parts of this stitch. Now I'm going to go back down. Do you see how this stitch goes around the legs and then back down into the same spot? So I'm going to go back down into the same spot here. So I come up from behind and I grab that yarn and I pull it down in the middle of that stitch there. And now I have a more seamless join that doesn't have the bulk of a slip stitch. It's hard to even tell where that join is, right? So now all that's left to do is to weave in our ends and stuff our cauldron, if you're not doing the optional bits. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my stitch marker here. See, it just comes out nice and straight. And I'm gonna grab some stuffing. I'm going to stuff the bottom very firmly now. I'm cheating, I haven't woven in my ends yet. You're going to wanna weave your ends in first. I just wanted to do this because it's the video. So I'm going to stuff the bottom pretty heavily, pretty firmly, pack it down in there, right? Get that shape that I want, all of that. Grab a little bit more stuffing for the top and kind of make this loose and fluffy so it's like a cauldron that's boiling over. In fact, I can even take a little bit and bring it down the side. So my cauldron is steaming and boiling over and it has these two cute little handles on the side and that is my cauldron. Now let's look at the options that we had for this. So maybe you don't want, maybe you want this in a place where kids are gonna have access to it or something and you don't want this stuffing just kind of exploding out. Maybe you want just the cauldron and you want a nice cover on top of the stuffing. So I'll show you how to do that. And also I'm gonna show you what to do for the handles if you did this round plain and wanted to sew on handles at the end. And you can push the handles whichever way looks better to you. I like them pointing up like this, but you can also have them pointing down like that. So whichever one looks better to you is cool. Just push the fabric the way you want it to go. Okay, they're just little loops, so they'll go either way. All right, so let's look first at doing the handles. If you remember when we did the attached handles, they started with a chain four. So we're just going to do that. We're going to chain four. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing I did for those handles. I'm gonna slip stitch in the first stitch, first chain, working in the back bumps, two single crochet in the second chain. And slip stitch in the last chain. But now I'm just going to fasten this off and I'll leave a little bit of a tail to sew. And I've got my little handle and I will just use the tails to sew the handle onto the cauldron. So suppose this was my flat round, I would just place the handle there and sew it in place using the tails. So that's an option if you don't want to do the integrated handle within the, the row or within the round, I mean. Okay, so those are the sew on handles. Now, if you want this covered and you don't want the fluff to show, you can take any color you want. Let's use some orange um, for the, the, the soup that's inside our cauldron, okay? So you can get whatever color you want and we're just going to make a little round piece to put on top here. The first three rows are exactly the same as the bottom of the cauldron. So we start with six stitches in the first row and then 12 and then 18. So I'm gonna do those three and then I'll come back and show you the fourth row. Okay, I've done three rows and I've been really bad. I didn't use a stitch marker, but this is the first stitch of the round. Right there, okay? So let's do round four. Now round four, we want to increase to 24 stitches, but we want to offset the increases a little bit so we don't get any sharp angles. So I'm not going to increase in the first stitch, I'm just going to work a single crochet in the first stitch, move my stitch marker up to that stitch, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and start my increases. So I increase in the next stitch, and then I single crochet in the next two stitches. And I'm going to repeat that around, so increase and two single crochet. Now when you get to the end, you'll only have one stitch after that last increase because we started with a plain single crochet. So that is the end of the round. I'm going to remove my marker and I'm going to 
this is going to get sewn in so I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch to close it because you're not going to see the slip stitch anyway so there's no point doing a fancy join so I just cut that fasten off I'm going to weave in the ends and then I'll come back so now I'm going to take my cauldron and I'm going to stick the lid in it don't worry if it's not all the way stuffed yet this lid has 24 stitches in it and this row of the cauldron where we did the decreases also has 24 stitches so I want to use the same color yarn and I'm going to just sew this in place all the way around I've attached a new yarn by weaving in the tail right here into the body of the cauldron and I've come out right around this second to last round round 14 where I have the fewest number of stitches I'm going to lay my cover on top and I'm going to pick a stitch to start with I'm going to go from the top down through the orange stitch okay through my cover stitch and then I'm going to go back out the cauldron in the same spot where I am now I've, I've started and I'm kind of down here but I'm going to just pick a spot and go back out the cauldron okay now I move over one stitch so around the outside of the cauldron I move over one stitch and I come back up not catching the cover at all I'm going to find the next stitch on the cover go through it from top to bottom like a whip stitch and back out exactly the same place where I came in from on the cauldron now you can sew this on any way that works for you but this is just what works for me I'm going to go back over another stitch come out not catching the cover it's kind of a whip stitch over the cauldron over the cover and a running stitch along the outside of the cauldron so I go back through the cover from top to bottom and out through the same spot in the cauldron where I came in from okay I'm just a few stitches from the end I have enough room to wiggle a finger in I'm going to take this time to fluff up my cauldron and see if I want more stuffing which I do so I'm going to open this end up and I'm going to just stuff the stuffing in there and get it to where I want it to be make sure I like the way it looks make sure I like the way it's sitting on its feet make sure all the stuffing looks good right I think that's good and then I'm going to just finish sewing that end shut now I just weave in my end and the cauldron is done there's one last step and that is to add the handle on top so grab your pipe cleaner which should probably be about 12 inches most of them are um, you can trim it down a little bit if you want to depending on the size of the handle you want and I'm going to stick it through from inside the cauldron to outside if you prefer you can go outside to inside it really makes no difference um, somewhere above the handle you just want to be consistent if you go outside to inside do that every time so I'm just snagging on something here there we go so you want to stick it through about that much I think that's what an inch inch and a half something like that not too much but enough depending on the size that you want your handle to be and then you fold it up and twist 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 and that will secure that end now you're going to make a nice curve don't put any kinks in it and stick this one through where the other handle where the other handle is so let's put that one right there and fold it up again and now you can look at your handle and say okay I want it about yay big yeah that looks good trim off any if you've got any extra and then fold it up twist 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 and now you've got your handle and that's how you make this crochet cauldron if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up share it with your friends or leave me a comment you can also subscribe to my youtube channel for more great videos thanks for watching